What's poppin' T-subs and T-squads? So, girl, I guess we about to figure out <sighs> what, if anything, that Atlanta is going to give us. As you can tell by the thumbnail, I'm nowhere near looking forward to it, but maybe they'll shock us. Maybe they'll surprise us. Maybe they'll actually give us something. So, we finna find out at 5, 4, 3, 2. All right, you guys. So the episode starts off with um, Candy, um, old, tight-ass Mammy Joyce and Ace basically trying to teach Riley how to clean the bathroom, basically so that she'll know how to take care of herself and take care of her room when she get down to NYU. Um, like, this is exactly what I mean by Candy's time on this show is the fuck up. It's up. Like I like I listen, the shit is up. It's up. I it's obvious that Candy has absolutely nothing else to give us from this point. Like that shit there. Moving on. So then um Cynthia, Kenya, and Latoya meet up to go shopping. Um Kenya send a Latoya a nigga selfie. I I, I keep telling y'all hoes. Candy done turned out all of them bitches. Okay, every last one of them ain't nothing but some undercover secret scissor sisters and all of them probably done bumped coochies and pocketbooks one point or another throughout the whole 13 years of this thing so i won't too shocked at that um then they talk about king and not being invited to portia's party again king i don't know why you give a fly goddamn about not being invited to something that you think wasn't genuine in the first fucking place so i'm um, um you know i girl whatever moving on <clears throat> so um Portia, Diane, and Lauren catch up. They sitting around eating salads and whatever the case may be, and Lauren brings over some hot dogs because she said, Girl, I'm already skinny mini. I ain't trying to be around here eating no damn salad for the fuck what? Ain't nobody around here watching they figure. Um, Lauren says that she felt bad for not inviting Kenya since she bought Pilar a Road to Parks doll. And, um, you know, Portia tell her, don't feel bad about it. You know, she, when she sees her, she's going to thank her for the gift or whatever the case may be. And then the producer asks her, does she feel a little bit bad for Kenya? And Portia was like, feel bad for what? Now, again, y'all know I don't even see it for Portia. But I was with Portia with that. Like, for what? The fuck am I feeling bad for? First of all, I didn't even know they was giving me this thing. Second of all, even if I would have known that they was giving it to me, I probably wouldn't have invited her ass. Third of all, like, I, we just go move on, girl. Trade text me. That's what that is. Moving on. We, I, I'll discuss that tomorrow more, maybe. Um, post your writing a book. Girl, I ain't got nothing to say. We gonna gag about that tomorrow in the live about Posha and this damn book, girl. Now here it is. This bitch ain't no shit about the goddamn uh, uh, Underground Railroad. She could much less read a book, let alone write one. But child, we gonna find out. Listen, work ain't honest but to pay the bills. So then they talk about growing up with divorced parents. Um... And all that stuff. And then she talks about how she picked Dennis to be the father of her child. Which I found weird and strange. Because last season, the way that she used to act when somebody said that Pilar looked like Dennis with a bow. She got all up in her feelings and all up in her bag. So it's like, I'm confused. Which one is it? Is it a read when somebody tells you that your daughter looked like her daddy? Or is it what you said it was? You picked him because he had money. He had you know, a, a business, he had a house, he wanted to get married, and you opened up your legs for him or, or whatever the case may be. And then they started talking about how, you know, uh, she wasn't around her dad as much as Lauren was because her and Lauren have sisters. And then she starts crying about that. And then she says that, you know, she wants to make the relationship with the Wiener Schnitzel selling as man work. Uh, for the sake of Pilar. But Portia, let me tell you something. You about to make the classic mistake that so many women make because you 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 you're you're putting all of this shit on Pilar. 
what good is it for you to make yourself be in a relationship? Like, you have to ask yourself, with the way Dennis is when it comes to women, do you want Pilar to meet somebody like him? And if the answer is yes, to do what the hell you want to do. Ain't my daughter, she ain't crawl out of my puss. But if the answer is no, you might want to reconsider that. Now, I'm not saying, uh, you know, don't deal with him at all because you can't do that. He has all rights to see his daughter. He has all rights to be around her just as much as you do. But you don't have to be with him simply for him to be there for uh, Pilar. I hate when y'all women do that. They're like, that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. Moving on. All right, you guys. Um, check this out, right? Like, I'm really trying with uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, y'all. I'm really trying, but I would be lying to y'all right now if I did not say, like, I, I really want to just gouge my eyes out. Like, looking at this bullshit, it's dry, it's delayed, it's, it's, it's dilapidated, it's, it's done, it's dead. Um, it needs to be buried in the grave and do not rise again in the next three days. Like, this shit is boring. I'm bored as fuck. Bravo, bravo, and do truly original and all of the other powers that be. I'm bored as shit. Like, I'm just going to be real. I'm bored. So then they get down. It's time for um, Cynthia surprise party. They king is throwing and, you know, she got everybody thinking that uh, Joe Biden is going to be there, child. And that, 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 that's a huge stretch to think that Joe Biden will be a part of anything dealing with Bravo, Bravo, Andy, and the Real Housewives franchise. Like, to any of you bitches to think that. All of y'all dumb, dizzy, and delayed. Um, and, uh, <sighs> and then everybody starts to show up. Pennywise showing up and her all white with the red lipstick like she always do. That's how she got a day, Pennywise. Um, and then King, I mean, Candy and Todd show up and, you know, then Mike and Cynthia show up and then, you know, everybody starts yelling surprise and, you know, Cynthia looks all confused and befuddled and bewildered and don't know what's going on. Looking like a deer caught in headlights about to get ran over by an 18 wheeler, um, with the ceiling missing, um, you know, Mike don't know what the hell going on, um. Yeah, that's all I got. We'll be back in a minute after these commercial breaks. <sighs> Cynthia asked Candy and um, King to be a bridesmaid and they accept. Candy sings a song. Shout out to Candy and her vocal cords. My master called Marlo that always talk like this shows up late. Portia showed up late. Fashionably late because that bitch was bad in that dress. Yes, God. Um, Yeah, that's all I got. I'll be back. Child, you want to know what was more entertaining? Um, The conversation that me and the panel are having and everybody in the panel is basically like, girl, they da, listen, they don't even know if they're going to give a review for this bullshit. Child, here it is. I'm sitting up here trying to do something nice for y'all. Well, I guess this ain't nobody else is doing it, and I done already started. I'm going to go on ahead and finish it. But yeah, panel, I'm on y'all side because this shit is boring. So, um, child, so while Kenya was getting up saying her little ditty bop, her little one-two step um, to... Mike and Cynthia, um, she gets upset when she sees Portia coming in fashionably late because I still say Portia's dress was it, honey. Um, Kenya tried to sing while they danced and then Portia gets up to do a duet with Candy. I thought that that was the most entertaining thing. Um, Latoya showing the picture of Kenya down to the table. I'm not under... You know what? I do get why. I honestly feel like Latoya is falling into the same thing that Kenya fell into, which is being production's puppet. I honestly feel like production was the one who told Latoya to do it. And because Latoya is a starving artist that wants to make sure that she comes back on this show, at least to be a friend of this damn thing, that um, she's just going to go on ahead and do it. 
Um, to me, it was tasteless. It was tacky. And that just wasn't the place, the time, or the space to even show anything like that at. But, you know, listen, whatever. Do you, girl. Um, and then Marlo chimes in and said, asks, why would she, you, why would Kenya show her? No, why would Kenya send her a half naked pic? Is it because she wants to get her booty done too? Or something like, girl, I, I, I don't even know. And then that almost turned into something between her and Ken I don't give a fuck. Um, and then Kenya comes out and says that she was asleep with Candy, Latoya, and Cynthia. But see, I'm not surprised at that. To let me tell her she done already did. So that is what it is. Moving on. Um, Kenya asks Portia, did she get the gift? And Portia thanks her for it. I love the way Portia handled herself in this situation. Because I'm not understanding why Kenya is so damn mad at Portia. Even Tanya spoke up and said, well, listen, it was a, it, it was a surprise part. I had no idea that they was even doing this for me. I had no idea. My sister was the one who sent out the invites. My sister thought about it and was like, maybe it's not such a good idea for me to invite her because don't nobody know where their friendship lies at this point. Nobody, and I don't even think they do. Like, honestly, y'all, and I'm going to be real. I still don't understand why Kenya and Portia don't like each other. I don't. Like, I feel like at this point, y'all have been around each other for so fucking long that y'all should be tired of always beefing with one another. It seems like at, at every fucking season, it's always a beef, a problem, an issue, a beef, a problem, an issue, a beef, a problem, an issue with the same two hoes. Like, that shit don't get tiring after a while. Like, not, neither one of y'all gets up amongst each other and say, girl, listen, I'm sick of this shit. What can we do to just squash it and squash it for real? Like, I, moving on. Um, yeah, girl, that, 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 that's all I got. That's all I got. Oh, girl, thank God we got down to the end of this fuck shit. So, girl, Riley and um, her schnoz go off to school. And that was the end of the episode. Um, this episode was tired, delayed through, boring, dizzy, done, overdone, should have never seen the light of day, should have never made it. Uh, I, the only thing that softened my heart about Riley leaving, uh, Riley and her schnoz leaving, was Ace. Seeing Ace, you know, cry, saying how much he was going to miss his sister and how he wanted to go with her to make sure that she keeps her room clean and make sure that she has gloves. Like, I thought that that was really, really cute. That tugged at my heart strings. I, I will say that you could tell that he loves his older sister, and I'm here with that. Um, but uh, uh, other than that, um, I mean, good luck, Riley, girl. You up here with me. You and that Latoya, uh, <laughs> you and that Latoya Jackson lookalike nose that you got. Um, you up here with me. Hopefully I'll run into you and I can point you to the direction and to a better goddamn, uh, plastic surgeon. Cause I know several personally that would have gave you a much better nose job to that. Now, if you was trying to walk around looking like Michael or Latoya Jackson, then they did their thing. But if you wasn't, yeah, you got one out of a lawsuit on your damn hands. Y'all, that's all I got. I ain't got no more to give you. Um, yeah, bye. What you giving, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business.